In today's video, I want to focus on how to change your iPad keyboard. And there are multiple ways how you can take a look at it, so let's just begin with it. So I would say that there are two groups of keyboards on the iPad. Hardware, physical one, which you can buy separately and connect to your iPad, and uh, the software one, which you tap on on the screen using your fingers. Let's begin with the software and more specifically the built-in keyboard. Like by default, we have the official one from Apple, which is great, but kind of limited and not really open to customization. However, there are some things that you can do with it. Like iPad official keyboard is also kind of powerful because you can like pinch it, you can move it around. Uh, it, there are multiple things that you can do with it to customize it and to change it in a way. You can rotate the iPad vertically so you can have like a better grasp of it or like I said, pinch and create a really small keyboard that is like a floating one which moves around the screen and allows you to use, use the keyboard with your one thumb, which is also kind of convenient. But I don't want to go too deep with this topic because I made a specific dedicated video just about that, just about modifying the official iPad keyboard, so splitting it, moving it around and other things are covered in the, that video. And it's of course going to be linked down below in the description. Moving on to the third party software apps. And there are of course many different keyboard apps on the App Store, most of which just uh, like change or modify uh, the font to make it look a little bit cooler. But for some general usage, there are two more popular ones, which is SwiftKey from Microsoft and Gboard from Google. So SwiftKey, you just go ahead and open up the App Store, search for it, download it. And you pretty much don't even have to open up the app because if you do open it, it's just going to tell you and give you instructions on how to install it. But instead, you just can go right away to the settings and navigate to the to the actual settings of that app. So you scroll to find SwiftKey and there is a keyboard section. So you have to enable the keyboard, but also make sure to enable and give it full access. Of course, only if you want to, but uh, the keyboard isn't going to work the best. You're not going to get the full potential out of the app if you don't allow the full access to it. If you open up the app, however, it asks you for so many different things, like uh, it tells you to create an account or to log in with an existing one. It asks you to share analytics, receive notifications and offers and stuff like that. Like we honestly just want a keyboard, right? So I would just advise you to not share analytics for the sake of your privacy and stuff. So, I mean, of course, do whatever you want. SwiftKey naturally allows you to modify the themes. You can, of course, change the settings like the languages and other things, but you can also create and put your custom image behind the keyboard. So this is the ultimate way to, to customize it. And of course, you probably noticed that on the regular keyboard, you have to hold down on the globe icon and multiple different keyboards will pop up so you can switch to a different one. So this is uh, how you pretty much change it. But uh, the funny thing about the SwiftKey is that the globe simply disappears when you're using it, which effectively prevents you from switching to a different one. Like that's a nice and interesting move from Microsoft and SwiftKey. The next one is a Gboard and um, this one is from Google, obviously. So the installation process is pretty much the same. You download the app and allow uh, the keyboard in uh, the settings and also give it full access. But uh, because it is from Google, obviously, you do get many features integrated right into the keyboard. One of which is just the Google search right uh, there, which means that you can check out uh, the weather and you don't even have to open up any web browser or any anything like that. You get the result right there in the keyboard, which I cannot really imagine using, but it is uh, there. You also get the GIFs built into it and you also get translate just because it's from Google. This one, of course, has uh, the globe to switch back to a different one, so you can easily switch back and forth. And also, just like with the Swift key, there is the option to go with your custom themes, like to use your custom image, change the settings and plenty of different things. So aside from the Google search and translate and this kind of features, aside from that, I don't see a huge difference between these apps. So it's pretty much um, up to you and which company you trust more, I would say, or if you can also go ahead and download some uh, third party one or other from the App Store. Now we are moving on to the hardware keyboard. So there are these official from Apple and there are actually two of them. So you can buy the original iPad keyboards that have been created just for uh, the iPad and by Apple. So there is the Folio and Magic keyboard as options. 
So they of course use the three pin connector on the back side so you can snap it automatically and it's just connected. You don't go through any sort of connection process in the Bluetooth settings or anything like that. The Folio keyboard, it was the first external one from Apple dedicated to iPads. It is cheaper, I mean, there are just the keys, nothing else. The keys have shorter travel time, which doesn't really resemble the feel of uh, typing on a real MacBook or other like really big keyboards. And of course, you, uh, you can use it as a case, which is nice, I guess. Then you have the Magic Keyboard, this is the floating one, as you remember, which you can very easily detach the screen, which is the iPad, and you can connect it very easily back. I mean, this one is a lot more like, like a laptop, and of course, it's a newer one, more expensive, it offers the trackpad, which is a great addition. This turns it into sort of a laptop, because you don't even have to touch the screen anymore. And besides that, there are so many third-party keyboards out there which you can purchase in a hardware form so there's so much to say about it from those fake ones that want to look like originals but cost like a fourth of the price to some branded logitech folio keyboards that are really nice and more affordable than the official apple ones but of course lack on some um, apple features like you know uh, the seamless experience and it's not gonna be that smooth obviously I will of course link some of my favorites down below in the description on Amazon so you can definitely take a look at them if you want to. You can even purchase some off-brand ones from AliExpress or Wish.com with questionable degree of quality I'd say, but if you're willing to take the risk you can do that I guess. So that would be pretty much it, I do not think that there is anything else what I should say about it. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and for more content like this, make sure to stay tuned and subscribe so we never miss each other on YouTube and you can always watch some other content. Thanks a lot for watching and see you guys later.